So here we all are in Psalm 93 today. Uh, really just love diving into the Psalms with you. It's a real encouragement to me to know that you are using Theofaith and you're using this YouTube channel to encourage and educate and edify yourself. It's so important that we take the time to be in God's Word in order to stand firm in the difficult days that we live in. Psalm 93 or today is a... Uh, really a celebratory psalm. It's a, a celebration of God's sovereignty. This is called an enthronement psalm because some think that these psalms were sung particularly when a new king was being enthro enthroned over Israel. Um, it's celebrating really the reign of the king. The phrase, the Lord reigns, is frequently repeated in these psalms and they kind of bind them together. Psalm 93, for example, Psalm 96, Psalm 97 and 99 all uh, repeat this phrase of enthronement. So ultimately, I think this throne or this throne, this psalm is looking forward to the time when the ultimate king over Israel, the ultimate Messiah, uh, will be th uh, enthroned, Jesus himself. This is going to be what will be sung in Revelation chapter 20, when Jesus sits on his throne. Um, we can be sure from this that God reigns over every realm of the universe. Each of the Psalms seems to focus on a different realm, but whether it's over nature or nations or history or salvation or even the eternal destinies of man, God's steady hand is over all of that. As you look at the psalm today, uh, there's basically three sections I want you to notice and meditate on. Verses 1 and 2 is celebrating and rejoicing in the sovereign reign of the king. Uh, verse 3 looks at the sinful rebellion against him, that against his sovereignty is a fallen world and fallen men, and there is a sinful rebellion but verses 4 and 5 give us comfort that no matter what this rebellion is like, that we have sure revelation that God reigns and that God rules and that when the ultimate Messiah comes, when Jesus returns, that he will reign and rule and we will see his sovereignty on display. So as you can see here, let me switch over to the psalm view. Uh, as you can see here, Psalm verse 2 is our hear verse today. Let's uh, meditate on that a little bit. It says, uh, His throne has been established of old. Well, established of old is saying before the creation, in eternity past. It's not as if God is some recently elected official put in place for some a limited, limited period of time, and then he'll go from the scene of history. No, he's eternal. He is not going away. He is, in other words, as it says there in the second cola, everlasting. Other powers come and go. They're temporary. Not really powers at all. He transcends them all. In fact, in light of their transitory nature, he is really the only sovereign over the whole universe. So how do we apply this? This is a great song. How do we apply it? Well, it's a gift to us, really. I think receive this psalm today as you read it as a gift. That while the fallen world wage, rages right now, sorry, I'm tying my tongue up here. While the fallen world rages right now, Everything that happens is ultimately going to confirm his singular reign. It's going to confirm that at all times he has been charge of the whole universe and he has been leading it in a particular direction, a direction that takes us to the reign of his son for a thousand years and then a reign in the eternal state of the righteous while the wicked suffer eternal torment, the righteous will be with them in eternal splendor. We'll see that God is leading us in that direction. So how do you respond to this? Well, let me make a suggestion that this is one of those psalms. It's short. 
You can convert this to a personal prayer for this morning or this afternoon or this evening, whenever you're listening to this, that you could take these words and turn them into a personal prayer. Uh, I've given you, I hope, if you don't have it, uh, send me an email and I'll send it to you, a little booklet I wrote. It's about 60 pages called Invitation to the Psalms. And I have a section in there on how to convert a psalm to a personal prayer. So look, look that up and uh, see how to do that. I'll give you an example here to get you going. Maybe that would be enough. You can respond to this by taking this and making it a prayer like this. Take verse 1, and here's how I've made it my personal prayer. Lord, you reign and are clothed with majesty. You have clothed and girded yourself with strength. Indeed, you have firmly established the world, and it will not be moved. And then you can go on from there. That's an example to get you going. But you can make that your personal prayer. Perhaps that write that in a prayer journal. Perhaps just a piece of paper. Put it in your Bible. And maybe revisit that several times during the weekend as various media and social media and news outlets pipe bad news into you, and you wonder if God is still on the throne, you can go and reroot and reground yourself, knowing that he reigns, that he is sovereign. God bless you, brothers and sisters.